So it's February 2024 and it's Black History Month. And the theme for this year's Black History Month is African Americans and the arts. And the arts includes things like literature, uh, sculpting, sculpting, theater, and of course music. So we're going to look at uh, a family of entrepreneurs in the music business. The Gordy family, starting with Barry Gordy the first through Barry Gordy the third. I'm Donna. And I'm Will. And this is Journey with Donna and Will. So just as an aside, President Jimmy Carter and Barry Gordy are half cousins. They share a great grandfather. So starting with the first Barry Gordy, um, so he was enslaved. They were in Georgia. Um, Barry Gordy won, somehow acquired the skill of uh meticulous record keeping. As a farmer, somehow he's able to uh, manage a profit year after year compared to his, his peers who also who somehow always seem to come up short. However, because of his skill of meticulous record keeping, he and his family were able to make a profit and were able to buy additional land to be a successful family. And that was very rare back then. You know, once uh, slavery was over, there was a lot of slaveholders who were taking advantage of newly freed. So somehow um, the Gordy family was uh, able to keep good records. You know, this, so this was one of those rare um, occurrences that I ever heard of. Right, so that got passed down. Now we're gonna talk about Barry Gordy II, also known as Pops, born in 1888. He appreciated the ability to listen to his elders. He indicated that he learned quite a bit about life and about even business from listening to those who were much older than he was involved in uh, business where he would sell uh, beef, pigs. He married a school teacher, uh, Bertha Fuller, and they had three children. And they, he and then Bertha and their three children ultimately moved to uh, Detroit. Right, and, and when they moved to Detroit, uh, Pops, or Barry Gordy II, he, he first worked in the plaster business and then eventually he had his own plaster business. And along with that, um, he was making money. He bought um, a storefront um, where he opened a grocery store, uh, which was called Booker T. Washington. He also opened a print shop, um, which his children ran, uh, Fuller, Esther, and George. Um, also, his wife was very entrepreneurial. Um, she had a real estate business and also a uh, insurance business. So it does seem like history of, you know, owning your own business started with the father in record keeping, and now it's moved to Barry Gordy II because he's had uh, multiple businesses. Under Pops, uh, their daughter Esther had the family uh, start a co-op where uh, the family members would put $10 a month into this savings uh, fund. Um, they called it Burr Barry after their parents' name. Um, and so they would uh, collect money and, you know, you could pitch an ideal um, for a business that you wanted to start. So they were very savvy with their money. They were very um, interested in owning their own business. So I would say, you know, both the parents, uh, Barry Gordy II and Beulah, um, their mother, um, had this um, ideal of entrepreneurship um, through their family. All right, so now I'm um, looking at Barry Gordy III. Um, sometimes Barry Gordy III is referred to as Junior. Usually you think if you're the second, that's Junior, but in this case, he was the third. Um, but they do refer to him as Barry Gordy Jr. So Barry Gordy Jr. had many jobs. I guess one of his early jobs was a record store owner. And when the record store fell, he got a job in the automobile industry to support his family. So Barry Gordy also liked to box and write music. He uh, was writing music, I think, for some uh, um, 
some people like Jackie Wilson. In one instance, he is with uh, Smokey Robinson and the amount of money he got was like $3.18. And Smokey suggested that he should go ahead and start his own label since, you know, he's really not getting paid that much. Um, for what he was doing. So with that, he did have the ideal of starting a record label. His sister had the co-op um, where they were collecting money and he presented his ideal of uh, creating a record label. He was asking for $1,000, um, but he eventually was able to get $800 from the family savings plan. So that is kind of where the money came from uh, to start uh, the record business. And so that is how uh, it became Motown. So uh, one of the interesting things, you know, we talked about um, Barry Gordy. He um, worked at an automobile industry, uh, Ford, I believe. And um, where he worked, um, he saw the assembly line and he kind of applied that to how he prepared uh, the Motown artists terms of like establishing different departments within his his company like the marketing department the promotions department the artists the singers the etiquette how to dress how to talk mm -hmm. you know, how to walk how to behave and uh you know as you, as you can see in a lot of the album covers and yes. some of the videos that you see where yeah. they were well dressed and right. uh, hair, hair well done and and even their their moves, you know, they had a dance uh, choreographer. Yeah, they were well rehearsed. Yeah. Everything was pretty tight. So yeah, it was yeah. an excellent, excellent company. They so some of uh, the artists that I remember from uh, Motown were um, Diana Ross and the Supremes, the Jackson Five, Stevie Wonder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Marvin Gaye, um, Gladys Knight and the Pips, Lionel Richie. I mean, it just goes on and on. Smokey mm -hmm. Robinson. Even some of the people closer to now, the present, I didn't realize Boys and Men went through Motown, which is interesting because that, that's kind of recent. Motown also expanded into movies. They produced a number of movies. Some of the more well-known ones include Lady Sings the Blues, Mahogany, and the ever favorite, The Wiz. Oh, did all of them have Diana Ross in it? Mm -mm. Seems like it. <laughs> ah, that's, that's interesting. But they had quite a few movies. A few, I remember the last one. Last Dragon. Yeah, the Last Dragon. That was yeah. a good one. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it seems like you know he expanded from from music into other arts. Yeah. Starting from the history of their family, they seem to be um, a Christian family. They said they went to church a lot. Some of the other traits from generation to generation, they listen to their wise elders. You get a lot of knowledge when you, you listen and, and do. You know, people listen but don't do. There was a thread of entrepreneurship, also familyness. Okay. Of course, you know, they have the Motown uh, Museum up there. I was saying how there was uh, this lady and this man moonwalking and um, also the smooth criminal lean did not know who they were <laughs> yeah, act okay. like I didn't know who they were even though we drove together and I grew up with them but, okay uh, so you talk about your yeah. uh, brother and sister <laughs> yeah. the Motown Museum is expanding people from all over the world come to see it they have tours uh, of the museum with very knowledgeable tour guides. It tells about the history, they provide uh, good music, and we highly recommend the Motown Museum. So if you have a favorite Motown song or- Movie. Movie <laughs> or group, uh, leave in the comments below. Thanks for watching, I'm Donna. And I'm Will. And this was Journey with Donna and Will. Please subscribe, like, and share, and we'll see you next time.